So far away, Lucas, I've no idea how far in the future this video is going to go up, but Mass Effect will return. It will. Oh, can't wait. Fucking love Mass Effect. So far away, Lucas, as you often do, would you like to let the lovely audience at home know what the topic of today's Wiki Weekend is? Yeah, we want to talk some Mass Effect again, so we're going through the Wiki page for the Asari race this time. Yes, I'm referring specifically to the Mass Effect Wiki, a link to which you can find below. And Lucas, first though, my like, thoughts on the Asari. Because the Asari are super fucking cool. So cool. Yeah, and I love how it is a, um, a, a interesting take on that really tired, obnoxious sci-fi trope of the all-female race. Yeah. Who all yeah. want to fuck the main character. Like, you know, like Captain Kirk finds him. It's like, I'm going to bang all of these. One of the things we've talked about with Mass Effect 4 is that we adore just the world building. I contend the world building in the Mass Effect universe is up there, um, if not above stuff like Star Wars and all the extended universe material has, because at least Mass Effect world building is consistent. And consistency is key. So here we are. The Asari, native to the planet Thessia, are often considered the most influential and respected sentient species in the galaxy. and know for their elegance, diplomacy, and their biotic aptitude. This is partly due to the fact that the Asari are among the earliest races to achieve interstellar flight after the Protheans, and the first to discover and settle the Citadel. Uh, a monogender race, the Asari are distinctly feminine in appearance and possess maternal instincts. Their unique physiology, expressed in a millennium-long lifespan, and the ability to reproduce as a partner of any gender or species, gives them a conservative yet convivial attitude towards other races, favouring compromise and cooperation over conflict. The Asari are instrumental in proposing the founding of the Council. I, I, I love that. I, I love mm. it. It's like, no man, we, can, like, we, we do what we want. It's the ultimate expression of sci-fi, of like, I can have sex with what I want. And that makes me wonder, has an Asari ever just, like, dated a Hana? Probably. You know, the weird jellyfish men. I love the jellyfish men. Oh, God, they're so cool. <laughs> like, my favourite side quest in the first Mass Effect is getting that Hana the licence to preach. <laughs> <laughs> just so he can stand. And I just sit there and listen to him. Ah, oh, hello, human. Would you like to hear about my jellyfish god? It's like, yeah, I do. I want to know everything about your race. Biology. Asari resemble humans in terms of basic skeletal structure, with five digits on each hand, and their feet are relatively straight, certainly in comparison to Quarians and Turians. Now, this similarity allows Asari to wear human armour. A typical Asari has a blue to purple complexion, though a teal complexion is possible, albeit seemingly rare. Some Asari, such as Matriarch um, Lydiana, Matriarch Beniza, and Liara Tsoni, and Talar um, and Taylor Vasia have facial markings and are unique colour patterns that vary for every Asari. In the place of head hair, Asari possess semi-flexible cartilage-based scalp crests. Oh, See, now we're starting to get into something really creepy, though. Asari have navels as well as breasts that continue to grow with age. As like, that means that they live to a thousand years old. Oh, God. What happens when you're a thousand? Asari also have a very robust cellular regenerative system. While they do not heal faster than other species, they are known to reach over a thousand years of age. This long lifespan is rivaled only by the Krogan. God, yeah. When Liara just turns around and is like, yeah, I'm, I'm basically a teenager. And that's like something in fiction they never really talk about. Mm. And it is like, yes, technically that the Asari is 100 years old, but in terms of human years, they're ancient. But the thing is, um, Commander Shepard, in Asari terms, is basically newborn. Yeah. <laughs> and like Liara is just getting on it. Anyway, so there is some conflicting information regarding the gender of the Asari. Asari are a monogendered species with no concept of gender differences. According to Liara, male and female have no real meanings for us. And if asked, they say that she is not precisely a woman. At the same time, Asari are often viewed by, as an all-female race, including by the Codex and uh, many on the Citadel. Okay. It says here that to humans at least, Asari appear female with breasts and voices that sound female. Even among the Asari, many individuals are referred to as she and her, but some Asari prefer male pronouns, which you should respect. I know this is like, you know, a video that gamers are going to watch, so that they need to hear that the most. Respect people's pronouns, don't be a peen. Uh, says here, or a vag. Or neither. It's up to you. Speaking of which, it says here that some Asari gravitate towards gender neutral pronouns where language allows. And I didn't know that. I'd never encountered that in one of the games. That's really neat. 
while admittedly uh, Asari bear feminine titles like Huntress and Matriarch, and Asari offspring are referred to as daughters, uh, it is believed that the Asari's chosen feminine pronouns are to simplify language translations. However, Asari gender is defined, they are innately different from humans, for Asari can mate and successfully reproduce with any other gender or species through a form of parthogenesis. Although they do not have one gender, they are not asexual and do in fact require a partner to reproduce. So they're weird lizard creatures. This is it. <laughs> I think I believe um, parthogenesis is um, something like lizards on Earth can do. Oh, right. Where they can just become involuntarily pregnant for no reason. And Asari provides two copies of her own genes for offspring, one of which is passed on unaltered. The second set of genes is altered in a unique process called melding, also known as joining or the union. During melding, the eyes of the Asari initiating the meld dilate as she consciously attunes her nervous system to her partners, sending and receiving electrical inputs. They have, like, mind sex. Yeah. And isn't that what um, she does to Commander Shepard almost immediately? Yeah, she immediately just starts mind-fucking him and he's like, what the hell is this? It feels awesome. Oh, oh it says here that um, during the melding, um, an Asari and their partner briefly become one unified nervous system sharing memories, thoughts, and feelings. Oh, God. That's some ne- That's like next level. That's like the, um, the sex helmets in Demolition Man. The offspring is always an Asari, regardless of the species or sex of the father, in quotation marks, for lack of a better term. And in, and in the case that the offspring is of two Asari, the father is the one who does not give birth. Hmm. Um, what? How, how do they know which one's the father of what? I think it is just like one of them gives birth and they choose. They have that choice. <laughs> just <laughs> That's like Pokemon, isn't it, in a way? Like, where it's the, uh, the female Pokemon is always like what the egg will be. Yeah. But you could, like, the father could be anything. What, what is it? Is it Whale Lord and Skitty technically are in the same egg group? Yeah. So you can breed a Whale Lord with a Skitty in Pokemon, and this tiny little Skitty will give birth to a Skitty that knows she, like, bounce. Like, wait, what? I don't know what's more terrifying, like, the Whale Lord trying to give birth to uh, just the Skitty or the other way around. Like, oh, yeah. God, I want to see that in the daycare. <laughs> <laughs> when you walk up, forty foot long blimp behind you and a cat. It's like I'm making some babies. Huh. Excuse me. Uniquely, the Asari are known to be perceived as attractive to many species. This may be because of their shared physical characteristics, e.g., body shape for humans and skin colour for Salarians, and the head fringe for Taurians. I, I never thought of that. And that's really interesting. It's like when you speak to um, um, your Salarian crewmate, Morden. He talks about how like pigmentation is what they find attractive. And then when you speak to um, Garrus, he talks about like head fringes, and that's how you compliment the head fringe of a yeah. prospective mate. And with humans, obviously, it's all about that TNA. And Liara and the Asari as a whole have that in space. They've got the head ridge, they've got like the head fringe, they've got like the deep pigmentation in their skin that varies in colour and intensity. And then they've just got massive slamming asses. Speaking of which, uh, Maudin Solace postulates that the mechanism behind the Asari cross-species attraction may be neurochemical in nature. It says here that the offspring resulting from such interspecies pairings are always Asari as no DNA is taken from the partner. Not in Commander Shepard's case, he gets in there. Instead, the Asari um, uses the male to explore her partner's genetic heritage and pass desirable traits onto their offspring as a map to randomise the spring of the offspring. Mm -hmm. Oh, it says here that Additionally, pairings with Krogan are not affected by the genophage. As such, pairings with Asari are sometimes seen as a way for Krogan to circumvent the genophage and have children of their own. It says here that it's also possible for an Asari to meld with another for the sole purpose of transferring thoughts without reproduction. It says it's usually to Commander Shepard several times. And finally, the Asari pass through three life stages marked by biochemical and physiological changes. The maiden stage begins at puberty and is marked by the drive to explore and experience. Most young Asari are curious and restless. It is not uncommon for many to try their hand at dancing in bars or working as mercenaries. Or working as mercenaries in bars. <laughs> so it's like, I think, the moment I realised that Mass Effect was like something special is when I walked into that bar with Garrus and you just see the 50 gyrated Asari on the tables. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, is the fact that later in the game, they explain that. They don't just put it in for, like, you know, titillation. Well, it's probably there for that a little bit. They explain it's that young Asari, because we live for a thousand years, like, fuck it, everyone finds it attractive. I can get paid to dance, is what I want to do anyway. 
Uh, the matron stage of life begins at the age of 350 roughly and it can be triggered early if the individual melds frequently. Um, this period is marked by a desire to settle in one area and raise children. So if you fuck around a lot as a young Asari, you're like, no, I need to settle down right now. <laughs> yeah. And it says that the matriarch stage begins around 700 years of age. Fucking hell. Uh, or earlier if the individual uh, melds rarely. So if they don't sleep around, like they become like, a spinster. Oh, you've got to find the middle ground, Carl. You've got to fuck around just enough. <laughs> so you've got to get that dick, but not too much of it. So make sure you go for the high quality Commander Shepard D. <laughs> so matriarchs become active in their communities as sages and counselors, dispensing wisdom from centuries of experience. That's fair. It should be noted that each stage may be started whenever an Asari feels that she has reached the correct level of maturity. So like the Asari, if you think about it, are like super fucking progressive in almost every single regard. They are, yeah. Like you can be who you want, you can do what you want. If you feel you're ready for the next stage of your life, you can take that. Mm -hmm. All Asari culture is just like generally, for the most part, super open and accepting of almost everything. It's like you could be an Asari and you could bring on a fucking Hanar to your parents. Like, yeah, sick, we love it. And then we have Lucas, right? We have uh, several other sections here. Like history, we're not going to cover that, but we have um, culture, government, military. Notable Asari, Asari Worlds, and Trivia. So, which of culture, government, and military would you like to cover? Well, you know on. which one I always pick, and it's always culture. Because culture's the most interesting thing, because Mass Effect World is so fucking good. So, because of their long lifespan, Asari tends to have a long view not common in other races. When they encounter a new species or situation, the Asari are more comfortable with an extended period of passive observation. That rather than immediate action. Yeah, which is easy when you can say, let's spend 10 years doing this, and it's the equivalent of another race doing that for six months. <laughs> yeah. And I think like Maudin Solus talks about it where like, oh, the Salarians live for 40 years. Oh god. Like, no. And he says, like, yeah, we live for 40 years, we haven't got time to dick around, that's why they talk so fast. <laughs> and I love that the entire species has evolved to talk fast because they do, do not have time. They are unfazed that some of their investments or decisions may not pay off for decades or centuries. Yeah, which is easy to do when you live for like a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Matriarchs can seem to make incomprehensible decisions, but their insight is evident when their carefully laid plans come to fruition, sometimes many hundreds, if not thousands of years later. That's pretty good, isn't it? Like when you've got like a 950 year old matriarch telling you, look, this is what we've got to do. And then you're like, I don't understand. It's like, trust me. It's what we've got to do. And then, like, 900 years later, it's like, oh, yeah, that did work. The Asari must have sick pensions. Imagine paying into a pension scheme for 700 years. You'd be fucking balling. It says here that traditionally, Asari spread their influence through cultural domination and intellectual superior... Fucking hell. Jesus okay. Christ. Not so progressive after all. They invite new species of advanced development to join the galactic community, uh, knowing that their ideals and beliefs will inevitably influence their existing culture. The Asari tend towards communal consensus attitudes amongst themselves. For example, living aboard shared spaces on starships, even if there are alternatives available. Oh, God. I, all that says to me is to go, oh, yeah, come with us. Come with us. We're going to mind meld together. <laughs> and then 20 years later, it's like, wait, what happened? No. The thing is, though, when their culture is one of absolute compassion and understanding, and their way of getting that across is you can have unlimited sex with endless super hot aliens, I would be coming around to that way of thinking. Yeah, it wouldn't take long to convince us. Like, if the president of Earth goes on TV and goes, look, we're going to bring an Asari on board to help guide global politics... And everyone's like, oh, but I don't, why can't humans decide their own affairs? He goes, well, this person's 950 years old. Their entire society is one of absolute prosperity and there's no need or want. Also, look at all these aliens that are going to move in that you can have sex with. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I I'm on board. I'm on board. It says here that um, Asari believe that their offsprings acquire the best qualities of their father from the melded genes, but evidence is anecdotal. Oh, because I thought that was like something they actually did. It's like, no, it's anecdotal. Mm. that they do that. It says here, they frown upon um, um, intraspecies conception since genetic traits and cultural insight is gained from mating outside their own species. So it is considered wasteful for Asari to reproduce together. The results of such unions are occasionally referred to as pure bloods, which, contrary to what it is in most media, is considered a great insult amongst contemporary Asari. So it is just, you better get fucking damn Krogans. <laughs> yeah, but I don't wanna. He's like, no. Go fuck them Krogans. 
<laughs> a rare genetic defect known as Ardat Yakshi, which makes a sari destroy their partner's mind during melding, is more frequent among daughters of pure bloods. Isn't that what like one of the Asari does in one of the later games? And you can choose yeah, so to that's, have um, Samora's mission that I was talking about, where she chases down Morinth because she's uh, melding with people and killing them, isn't she? And then if you are renegade enough, you can be like, no, fuck you, Samara. I'm going to mind meld with your daughter and just die. <laughs> it's like a, a non-canon ending where you yeah. just get mind sex to death. I love that it's a like renegade Shepard decision. Knows exactly what's going to happen. Goes, yeah. I yeah, love the idea good. of the last thing to go through Shepard's mind besides complete oblivion is just worth it. Oh, so despite appearances to the contrary, Asari dancing is more than just a way to fleece money from interspecies admirers. It's actually a form of martial art. <laughs> <laughs> they have danced martial arts. Oh, capoeira similar to, coming in, man. He says that's similar to Tai Chi or capoeira, capable of being practiced by sufficiently biotic humans as well. Oh, God. Alec Ryder thinks it's a means by which Asari managed clubs hire dancers who can pull double duty as their own bouncers. <laughs> 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 the thing is, though, how fucking insulting is that? And no one's ever going to believe that, are they? That you went into like a Mass Effect strip club and the dancer who you tried to skis on just like danced you out of the room while psychic <laughs> blasting your mind into pieces. Um, because of their natural sensuality, that's a real sentence, an ability to mate with any species, Asari are sometimes rumoured to be promiscuous. These rumours are mostly a result of misinformation or, and I quote, Wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's fair, isn't it? Like well, I'm guessing, like human. Like we talked about ourselves. Of, yeah, man, all these hot aliens. <laughs> In fact, uh, Asari have to accept if they mate outside their own species, they will almost inevitably outlive their own partner. Therefore, they have had to apply their f um, philosophical long view to relationships as well, savoring the time they spend with their partners rather than focusing on the inevitable loss. That's got to be rough, on it. So, essentially, uh, their partners are like having a pet. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like when you buy a dog, in it, And you go, yeah. oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. You've got one. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> a few Asari abandon all but a few personal possessions become Justicars, members of an ancient order of Asari, adhering to a strict code. Justicars operate inside of Asari space, correcting injustices, often through harsh means, including death. God, yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Just... You go into a sari space and get killed by a fucking kung fu dominatrix psychic alien assassin <laughs> who just kicks the ever loving shit out of your balls. So, though all asari are natural biotics, there are some who choose not to develop their biotic power. Wow. Why would they? Yeah, so all asari are born with psychic powers and they go, nah. <laughs> like, even Why? just. From like a pragmatic perspective, the ability to move things with your mind is so fucking useful. There are ten times today where I've looked over something I wish I had psychic powers just to grab it. So I say that doing so precludes an Asari from military service, although there is no social stigma attached to the decision. Oh, look at that. Asari's keeping it fucking real. Um, compared to humans, Asari normally take meals only twice a day. I want them to be like Sarlax so they eat once. They just have one massive meal like every hundred years. I'm do surprised I, do you know, they haven't just evolved to not need food. Do you like Nibbler? Like his species in Future Armor where they have like the <laughs> meal time which is like every animal on Earth. I want that. Economy. <laughs> the Asari possess the single largest economy in the galaxy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> religion. Uh, you know what? I don't care. I, I don't care about Asari religion because their god's not going to be as cool as fucking like a Krogan god. <laughs> oh, but, oh god I fucking love me some Mass Effect oh, it's so good so good such good world building and Mass Effect going to return I'm so excited and the most exciting part is it looks like they've just ignored the fact that Andromeda fucking happened <laughs> yes <laughs> fuck you Mass Effect Andromeda <laughs> 